you only have a thousand dollars and you're looking for the best guitar I'm on a search to help find the coolest, best guitars, most value. And this is a guitar that absolutely has to be considered in that this is the D'Angelico XL Tammany. only have a thousand dollars and you're looking for the best guitar i'm on a search to help find the coolest best guitars most value least money or at least the most appropriate amount of money for that amount of guitar under a thousand dollars and this is a guitar that absolutely has to be considered in that this is the d'angelico xl tammany now this is an iconic brand that has been resurrected. Now, this is not the same as the original D'Angelico's. This is the kind of guitar that you would find. This giant, beautiful, ornate headstock uh, with the metal piece here in the middle, the inlay on the headstock, the imperial-looking tuners, uh, the split block inlays along the neck, and then a big, beautiful, golden-colored guitar with beautiful finish all around front, back, and sides. This is not the same as the original D'Angelico's, but in its resurrection, this brand, I mean, they're, they are, they're swinging for the fences to really line up with as good, as great as the original D'Angelico's. Now, this guitar comes in at $799, which blows my mind. This is so much more. All guitars are better than they were 20 years ago. Better for the price, better for the features, better for the value, better for the finish, for the features, for the longevity that they'll last with, and they come with a hard case. So let's run this guitar through a three-question gear review. Now, before we get into that, there are a couple things you need to know. Number one, this is a sponsored video. I got this guitar, and this is part of a sponsored series of content uh, from Sweetwater. They are dear friends of my YouTube channel. They've been amazingly kind and gracious to me. When you support the sponsors that sponsor and support this channel, you are helping fill the world with music and friendship. And that leads me to my second point. My second point is that you should make sure you're subscribed. If this is your first time watching one of these videos, I'm Jeremy, I'm the guitar hunter, and my job is to help fill the world with music and friendship by teaching people how to find the right guitars, sell the wrong guitars, and build a meaningful collection so that you make meaningful friendships and just a there's a deep and meaningful, wonderful life on the other side of this. So make sure you subscribe down below. With all of that said, let's jump into a three question gear review on the D'Angelico XL Tammany. Now this guitar is beautifully specced out. It is a really ornate and beautiful guitar to look at. Let's talk about some of the features. First, it is a it is a Sitka spruce top. This is a solid Sitka spruce top. The aging toner, so it's that really good kind of gold roasty color. Has an ebony bridge, ebony fingerboard. On the back and sides, it is laminated Macassar ebony, which is beautiful. If you look in the sound hole, let me just 
can you see in the sound hole? You can see just this incredible, incredible, um, streaky, wonderful ebony on the back and sides. Now it is laminated, it's not solid, but bear with me. This guitar sounds great. In the room, it sounds and feels like a really great guitar, way more than $799. So bear with me. There have been many great guitars that you love on records, in live performance, in person, sitting in your lap that are laminate and are still just magical, wonderful guitars. So other details in the specs of this guitar that you should pay attention to, has an inch and 11 sixteenths nut width, which can be a little snug um, because this is an OM shape. Normally you would have an inch and three quarter nut width, but this one has an inch and 11 sixteenths. So it's 1.68 inches. It's however, whatever the difference is between 1.68 and 1.75. It's not giant but it is noticeable and so if you're an articulate finger style player you're just gonna have to think a little more if you're a strummer humma a humma this is a perfect kind of guitar for you now the other thing that you should know is that this is a 25 inch scale length which is half an inch shorter than a martin scale length and th and a quarter of an inch longer than a gibson scale length when if you're concerned about scale length the, the easiest way to think about it is longer scale lengths are a little stiffer they have a little more tension to the strings they're still playing the same notes but because of that, it definitely, shorter scale lengths, you're going to feel a little more slinky, a little more bluesy, jazzy. And then on the other side, I guess I should say jazzy in a longer scale length with a little more string tension. But anyway, I did notice, this is the first guitar that I've noticed that my fingers feel cramped this way. That doesn't normally happen. Normally, it's up and down where you feel, you know, the spacing. But with this, I could tell that the frets are just, I mean... It's an imperceivable difference, but it does break your gait a little bit. It's like if you've ever been in a business um, or if you've ever been in a house that somebody built, like an old house, and they didn't, like the stairs are out of spec to the code, like you don't even realize that your brain is used to whatever a normal stead, uh, stair length is and the tread and the throw and all that until you start like catching your heels and hitting your toes going up and down these stairs. So it's the same thing with this, um, with this spacing on the uh, frets themselves. I found myself just a little jumbled. The last two features that I think make this guitar exceptionally cool and good and why I would really like this guitar to be my own. Number one, it doesn't have a cutaway. I just think the guitars with cutaways look goofy. I prefer the look of a guitar with, you know, those full symmetrical shoulders. And so this guitar just looks beautiful to me. And so that's a great feature for me. Another feature that I think is awesome is the pickup. And this is, it has the Fisherman pre Plus. And so you have a tuner in here, you have an EQ, you have a notch, you have a bunch of things. I also like that the battery's on the outside. Now, I don't love having a hole in the side of my guitar, but I'd rather have a hole here than on other guitars that have the hole down here in the jack. So this way you still get the jack out the end pin, so your strap and your cable. I like this, it works really well, it sounds killer. And you have a bunch of control in the tone of your guitar from here because the biggest problem with most pickups and acoustic guitars is that you are at the mercy of the sound guy out there. So we, having some level of control, uh, sometimes it's volume and tone, this time you have volume, tone, tuner, treble, EQ, notch, brilliance, and phase. You have a million things, not a million, but you have like six controls that you can dial in. And if the house is making your guitar sound wonky, you can do something at least to fix it here. You also can turn the volume down if you need to be muted if you want to tune, but there's also a mute when you hit tune. But anyway, this is an amazing uh, feature. And so it puts this guitar in a place that this is a professional grade guitar. Now, the let's talk about some things that I don't like about this guitar. Number one, I wish that this guitar was, uh, was solid back and sides. Macassar Ebony is an extremely expensive material, so it would be really crazy for this to be solid. Uh, yeah, like think of, I mean, go Google after this video, go Google other guitars that are Macassar Rosewood or Macassar Ebony back and sides, and you're going to see some real expensive stuff. Um, like, uh, Leo Buendia just built one and, uh, but so it's, it's really beautiful. I wish it was solid, but it couldn't be this tone wood. So it would have to be East Indian Rosewood or Pau Ferro. But I do know that if you'd ever sell a guitar, cause there's such a prevalent belief that, uh, solid is good and laminate is bad or ply is bad and therefore people are going to chop you down. So this is a kind of guitar, it's kind of a transitional guitar for some people. It might be a forever guitar for some other people. And so this guitar, I mean, it would be with you for a long time. Uh, but if you'd ever need to get out of it or sell it or move it, I just don't want you to take too hard of a hit because people just can't 
see through uh, what it is for what they've been told that they should see when they look at it. The other things I wish were a little different on this guitar, and I am 100% for the ethical sourcing of wood and in carpentry and luthery, building guitars in such a way that you can get the most guitars out of the least amount of wood. I think that's amazing. There is a scarf joint on the headstock, and I just wish that it was blended better. Um, it's just really jarring. Um, there's a really clear line in there. And uh, so that, that kind of gets me. Um, anything else on this guitar? Oh, um, one thing I don't understand and I don't like per se is that these um, the bridge material, the wood of the bridge is really, really thick. Part of that is pulling some like vibes from old uh, jazz guitars that they would overset the neck. So basically they would put the neck too far back this way. And so they would really build up like a really tall saddle to give you kind of an arch top sound. That's not necessarily what they're doing here. It reminds me, I had a Breedlove Cascade, Breedlove Revival. It was a 12 fret cedar top, East Indian Rosewood back and sides. And uh, it had a really thick bridge. And so I think what's happening is probably it's just a QA, QC thing. That they do thicker bridges, they overset the necks, and then that way if they need to later, they can do it. They have a ton of room to wiggle and move and sand down instead of having to take the bridge off and re-sand them. But it's just a little, I mean, you, you wouldn't see it from where you're sitting, um, but when you're playing it, you would see that. I mean, it's a, it's a quarter inch. It's a lot uh, of material. I don't think it necessarily messes with the tone. It's an x brace top. Um, and so anyway, it's okay. It's fine in the end, but it's just a little detail that if you've been around the guitars that this guitar is trying to emulate, it's just different than how they are in the original. So all of that culminating when I look at this guitar, when I hear this guitar, when I play this guitar, do I think people should buy it? I mean, yes. Like if you're in the market for that mid range, $800 to $1,000 guitar, this, I mean, this sounds better than the other guitars I've tested today. It's, it has a thickness and a fullness to the tone of the guitar. It's just a really good sounding guitar. And um, it's just so much better than like the Alvarez kind of guitars that I grew up playing, the Fender acoustics. I mean, so many of the guitars I owned early in my guitar playing life pale in comparison to this. This reminds me a lot of a Martin OM21. Now, it's mostly the color is the same and the size of the body is the same. The scale link and all that stuff's different. But this is a dearly beautiful guitar. And I think with a good setup, a good set of strings on it, this guitar will be a faithful musical companion for a long time. So, man, I I would I would readily tell people that this is a good guitar that they should check out. So, thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy. I'm the Guitar Hunter. Make sure you subscribe. If you're trying to figure out what guitars are right for you, I spent a ton of time last summer into the fall building out a, a full video course that teaches you how to buy the right guitars. What to think about when you walk into a guitar shop. What to say to a salesperson to help someone just leave you alone, but also give you a good deal. And then when you buy guitars, there's all, we cover all the stuff about how to sell guitars that just aren't your thing, that aren't right for you. And so if you're struggling with any of that stuff, I want to help you. And I also want to help you build a meaningful guitar collection so that you get a room full of guitars that represents you, your values, your worldview, that support the things that you care about. And when you're gone, it leaves a legacy for people after you that you would help point them towards valuing the things that are worth valuing. Mm -hmm.